surface level is boring. We're getting vulnerable, deep, and open about everything. This is Almost Anonymous. All right, hello. It is time for the podcast. I've been waiting for this moment. This is Almost Anonymous. I'm Jackie Hollywood, and yes, this is my very first episode. Very exciting. And I have a special guest with me today, Michael Benz. What's up? Thank you so much What's for being up? here. What's going on? I'm so happy to have you. First of all, your outfit is fire. Like, lo- look at the pants. I'm look so, at the jacket. I want to take off my glasses, but I feel like it just goes with the fit. So. It does. It goes with the vibe. I usually so. wouldn't wear glasses, honestly. Like, I would totally have no glasses, but I'm like, you know what? Let's do the pink. Let's do the spring colors. Let me bring some gold in this bad boy. So <laughs> no, it looks fire. Me. It looks good. It looks Thank good. You. So mm-hmm. Michael Benz, for those of you that don't know, he's on TLC's Darcy and Stacy. That's where I know you from. I am a fan of TLC in general. I love yeah. reality TV. Yeah. So I, and it, you know, it's a 90 day fiance spinoff yeah. and I've been watching 90 day fiance since the beginning. Oh, so, nice. um, that's where Michael Benz is from, but also he's a creative director of his own brand. Um, are you, is the stuff that you're wearing right now all from so, your brand? Yeah. Everything, uh, that I wear, um, is, is always one of one. I'm really just into fashion. It's an obsession for me. I, I really just want to create and inspire so yes you got the custom painted leather pants this jacket actually glows but it's on the back sick and then you know the crystal and yeah just we have like similar things right now i have like some chains you got some chains yeah. our earrings kind of have like a similar vibe like yeah. a, and so, then the pink <laughs> i'll give you the i'll give you the breakdown on the accessories so we got this is my original logo by the way and that's actually me but it's an anime form love it so that's, I don't know if you can see that. Let me just boop, zoom in. There we go. <laughs> uh, that, and then the crystals, aura quartz. This is more or less like um, ultimate protection. And if you're a Dragon Ball Z fan, I mean, this is the four star Dragon Ball. You know, Gohan gave that to Goku as a kid. So I'm big in anime. I love it. You, you could be your own anime character. I should. I am. You're... <laughs> there you go. I am. Perfect. Okay. So, what Almost Anonymous is all about, you know, there's so many podcasts out there that are just interview style like tell me about what you're doing with your life and your show and yada yada all the fame stuff but what I really want to dig deep about is like who you are as a person I want to know Michael Benz I want to know you when you were five years old I want to know who you are now um, and kind of connect that with this public figure status that you've gained because of the show so I kind of want to start out with childhood so tell me about your childhood like where were you born what kind of neighborhood did you live in like what was your childhood like so if you are familiar with Senegal and like Africa, I was born in Cape Verde. Okay. Cape Verde is a very small island. It's on the West Coast. Uh, yeah, it's, it's on it, its own little baby island. So um, that was where I became me, if you will. It's, it's very, you know... When you come from a different island or you just come into the States, it's very fresh and new and, and different. You know, anyone that can relate understands my feelings about coming to America. It's it's a big deal. You know? How old were you when you came? I think five. Okay, so, so do you have, because when you're a little kid, sometimes your memories get kind of lost. Jet, do you have Jaden, a lot yeah. of memories? From- I have memories of being being uh, a traveling baby, mm. if you will. You know, we, we hopped around a lot and... Um, for me, I, I really got to America like maybe, uh, I want to say maybe eight or nine, you know, because my, my family, they're, they're traveling like, I wouldn't say monks, but I would say like they're just always on the move. Mm. What you did know? your parents do for a living? They were basically in, in, in the U.S. Navy and okay. things like that, you know. Um, I, I really remember most times just kind of like being on the move with my mom and stuff. And I, I just, you know, I've seen a lot, a lot, a lot of the world as a kid. But when I go back in time with my mom, you know, it was really just about us and just like on the move, you know. Would you say your life, your childhood was like a good childhood or was there a lot of struggles? I think I think more or less I was really unfamiliar with the world as as it was back then. And I, I learned that, you know, hard work does pay off. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, my family is very hardworking and you know, they've done themselves a lot in in their life. And they've shown me that, you know, you, 
believe in yourself and you put a lot of effort and just things will, will start to align, you know? Yeah, I love that. So when you came to America, um, what state did you get to? And like, how was school for you? Like, did you feel like an outcast at any point? Did, oh, man. So You're like, I don't even know where I lived. I lived, <laughs> I lived on the East Coast, actually. We were, we were in the East Coast. Um, and I would say it was more or less like a, what, uh, I bounced from, what's that place called? Uh, excuse me. Um, <laughs> if, if you could, was it Yarmouth? It's like... Is that, that a city? That I don't even know, man. Like, this, this is, <laughs> is that this a street year, name? Is that a... <laughs> this was so long ago, and it's just like it slips your mind when mm. you like really start to just kind of like live where you live. But it was, let's say, Boston area, like New Bedford. Okay. Um, and then Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York. Um, and where else was I? Rhode Island. Yeah, I said Rhode Island. So you went to a bunch of different schools. You were like that kid schools. that was just yeah, like just... here for a year, there for a year. Exactly. So a lot of like teenage years were really just kind of like moving around and and popping in different schools. And, you know, did that I, mess with you at all? I think more or less it made me realize like everyone's different in each city. There's a lot mm -hmm. of difference mentality wise and a lot of like just kids that are bullies and kids you, when you go through that stage of being bullied in different parts of uh your childhood you start to realize like like am i am i so different because i was super different in school too i was gonna ask you were you always like this unique quirky or is this an adult thing that i like... i think more or less when you go through so much like like everyone's been through some kind of trauma yeah everyone everyone had either bullied or been like, you know, been just put in a corner and just like made fun of for whatever reason. I was just remembering like, you know, being different, dressing different, wearing just stuff that did not make sense. Mm -hmm. And to the normal eye, it would be like, what a, you know, like, like weirdo. It would yeah, be like, you're a weirdo. Super weirdo. And mm -hmm. I'm sure people that are watching would be like, you're still weird. You're, bro. <laughs> but you embrace the weird, and, embrace the chaos. And again, yeah, it, it, it it forms, it becomes some kind of like catalyst. And then after you get out of high school, you're doing your thing. And again, I came out of high school like fun and cool and like, oh yeah, let's do this. And I went straight into DJing. Mm. So that, that personality that grew was formed in the beginning. Did you ever get into any fights or anything? Like, were you that kind of kid or were you I think more I got like, beat up. You got beat up. You weren't doing up. any beating up. I don't, I'm, I'm a, I'm a peacemaker. Uh, make love, not war, right? Yeah. Make love. No, excuse me. Make art and love. Yes. I love it. Well, making love is art, you know, of course it can be. Well, sometimes. Can, yeah. Um, <laughs> so you got beat up. Like, how did you handle that? Did, was, did that really like, did you go home and really take that to heart or were you just like, well, this is part of life. Like what, how did it shape who you are? I think thinking about it now, the only time that that happened, you know, was, was the yeah, end like high school. And you you kind of walk away from that and you you feel like, damn, you know, like this dude really has this kind of energy to try to beat somebody up and make them feel. And I feel like, you know what, I'm going to grow from this, you know. So you have that mentality even when you were younger. I think, yeah, that's why I'm like this now. Because it's hard when you're when you're that age and someone's bullying you. Because now I'm like that too, where I'm like, I don't care what someone thinks of me. That's a you problem. Well, that's, that's the thing now. When you go through that and you recognize it, I don't even talk about this kind of stuff. So this is like super exclusive. Like this is Hell like yes. stuff that I don't even think about because it's, it's, it's a low vibration. So <laughs> to continue to be me, I think now when I, when I get bullied online, when people want to talk trash and that negative energy gets erased like that. Mm -hmm. I don't even respond. You don't get my power because I know who I am. I'm on a high frequency. I'm vibrating on a high frequency. And at the same time, we know that who we are is us. We are happy with us. Mm -hmm. So we don't care what you think. We don't care what you think. We don't care. It doesn't affect us because we are what we are. We just love ourselves. When you love yourself, an outside f opinion can't really penetrate. It you, can't. Right? I got um, too many force fields up. Yeah, and that's why, like, when I saw when I watch you on the show, obviously you're, you know, sh the shows are edited and there's narratives, of course. 
But I always felt like you were just that person that kind of you were like, I, I know who I am. I love who I am. And I always liked that. So when I, I actually want to tell the story real quick of why you're even on the show. Um, I was out at a bar for my friend's birthday. I look over and I it's hard not to recognize you. You know what I mean? So I walked over and immediately was like, hi, I recognize you from Darcy and Stacy. And your energy was just so positive and uplifting that I was like, I have to have this guy on my show because you're the kind of person that I like to, you know, surround myself with. So I can already tell that you're that kind of person. Yeah. I mean, again, it, it comes down to, you know, who you are. And sometimes people always hold on to their upbringing. Mm. They hold on to, oh, I was beat up in high school. I want to be a bully to other people. Or I was, this is like, okay, cool. We get it, bro. We get it, girl. We understand. You got to move forward. You got to grow. Heal yourself first. And then you can just... You know, go out, have fun, because there's a lot of motherfuckers out there that are are, are at the bar, and they want to be, oh, look at it, ha, ha. you know, that's that's a form of bullying. Cool, bro, it, it don't phase me, G. I'm a super artist, like, I'm on some, like, ultra fucking cy- cyber replica, like, you can't even, like, come <laughs> near me with that I shit. I love it. I don't even care, G, like, I floss out in glow apparel every time I go out, and everyone has an opinion, but that opinion doesn't matter to me. Their opinions don't matter to me or anyone else that thinks about the, themselves when they go out. And if someone says, oh, this outfit is that dude, I wouldn't even nah, don't even you gotta matter. Keep your circle. T- when you were younger, did you keep your circle tight? Like your friends? Did you just have like a core group of best I friends? I have two, two friends, mm-hmm. me and my best friend. That's it. And he was the one who got me in the clubs to DJ for him to work at the radio station. Are you are you Zach still friends Dillon. with him now? Zach Dillon, that's my dude. Look <laughs> him up on Instagram. He's world famous. Shout he's, out Zach Dillon. Yeah, he he's the one. And this was like movie shit. I were in the club. We're working back then. It was like me and Zach, ninety six three the Rose. We're on the air. And then Friday nights we would have our show. We would have a show at Kendrick's. We would kill it. That club, whatever. I don't even know where that club is anymore, but <laughs> we would kill it. He hand me the mic. I'd be on the mic hosting. He DJing. We were a dynamic duo, Batman Robin vibes. You know what I mean? You Maybe. said that was right after you graduated high school. That was great. Yeah, that was after because we, you know, living living out in the East Coast, it's like not a lot to do. Not a lot to do. And we got lucky because we were the ones killing the clubs. So. It was just like, wow, man, like, let's do this. How did you learn to DJ? I, I didn't. You just taught yourself? I just taught myself with That's him. That's dope. Me and him, he was doing it. I've looked at him, pay attention, you know, follow him. And it's about the energy. As a host, as an MC, you have to, like, control the crowd. So you've got to, like, figure out how I'm going to get this crowd to jump, how I'm going to get this crowd to do some shots, how I'm going to get this crowd to, like, make some noise. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a master, master of ceremonies, if you will. That's how I started. I didn't start in fashion. Everyone thinks, oh, you just design. No, I started as an MC. And then when I got to LA, then I just pumped out every single club in Hollywood and was like, hire me, hire me, hire me. Like we're going in, we're hitting the ground running and you can't just come to Hollywood and think you're going to get, get in the club. You got to do what you got to do to make friends. And I tell you in my book, it's about 10 ways to make friends in Hollywood. Number one, Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you four. Number one, make friends with the GMs. Mm -hmm. Number two, make friends with the bartenders. Number three, make friends with the door guys. Number four, always be yourself. Love That's it. the biggest thing, man, because everybody is always trying to, eh, this glam shit. It's like, you guys, <laughs> we've already done this. Mm. I've already traveled through time and seen all the stuff that's going on with these 20 to 25-year-olds. They're doing what we already did. So I'm grateful to see that. And I'm grateful to be here because I see how you flowing. And this is what we used to do. And we're still doing it. And I'm still here in L.A., because a lot of motherfuckers left. Mm-hmm. They couldn't They couldn't do it. They gave well, up. Well, yeah, a lot of people, they, they don't get what they want out of it, and so they leave. I actually, I'm guilty. This is, I call this LA 2.0 because mm-hmm. I moved here. I'm from the Bay Area. I moved here when I was in my 20s, um, tried to hustle and do some stuff, gave up, essentially, moved back home, and then decided in my 30s, you know what? I didn't give that a fair shot. Like, I, I have more to give. I'm going to do this again, so now I'm back. And, like... Now I get to sit here and do this with you. And this is what I love. So when you say people leave because they give up, like, I just want to say, like, don't give up. If you have a dream, just just pursue it and it will come if you're a good person. (laughs) Yeah. Again, it's all about the energy, motivation. Like, what did he say to me at Fox? He said, Michael, you got to have resilience. Mm -hmm. This, This VP of Fox, when I interviewed him, like, this is decades ago. You can look this shit up. Trust me. This dude said, Michael, 
You got to have resilience if you want to be in this industry. True. Like, you got to have the passion to do it. And tell, I'm telling you, you look me up on YouTube with some videos from 20 years ago, 10 years ago. All these big VPs and Fox dudes that I interviewed, this is what they gave me. This is the kind of stuff they were telling me. And I kept rolling. And I'm telling you, back then, we were dressing the same. We were the same. We ain't changed. This, the, the only thing that changed was my style. It just elevated. Mm -hmm. You know? But all the stuff that these big boys said to me, Hugh Hefner. I'm talking like Kathy Hilton. Like all these big time people that I've met in my lifetime, man, they gave me so much knowledge and wisdom. So that's why I'm like, man, when I do interviews, I'm always remembering when I was an interviewer, who I was interviewing, what would I take a, a, away from that? Not just, you know, a video and a couple chuckles. It's like, what is the wisdom this dude is telling me or this woman is telling me? And every time I remember resilience, you got to have like the motivation, good vibes, personality, you know, just keep going. And not taking things personally, like so many doors are going to close right before one opens. So it's almost like if, if you hear a bunch of no's, it's okay not to take that personally. Do you feel like that's how you are as well? I think most times when you get a no, someone else will say yes. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the more no's you get, the more motivation you get. Because yeah. at the same time, I could have said no. My PR could have said no. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be honest. I'm not like Tom Cruise in it. But I tell you, like, I know a bunch of people in that world and I don't go out and flaunt and this. I'm a pretty chill dude once you get to know me. My style is on fucking one million all the time. But at the same time, I'm still down to earth motherfucker. And I keep it 100 million times. And that's why people like me. Because I'm always transparent as fuck. Ask me some shit. I'll tell you how it is. I don't like to be like, uh, sugarcoating shit. And, <laughs> You're you know, just putting you. Some fucking, <laughs> putting some more ice cream on top and putting <laughs> some cherries, bro. No, this ain't Dairy Queen G. This is Michael <laughs> Benz G. Like, we, you know, we're we're keeping it one. Were you million. always were you always super blunt and direct? Is, was that your personality just growing up, or is it something that you came into like more in your adulthood? I think every time you 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 shift and you change your energy and you grow, you get older, you get wiser. Mm -hmm. You realize it's cutting the bullshit out. I don't got time for nonsense. Yeah, I ain't got time for all this extra like. Extra stuff. I don't know. Like, you you see it. Hey, you want to be involved? You want to be a part of the project? Cool. Talk to my manager. If you don't want to do it, if I don't get an email, all right, that's it. We got our answer. Have a good day. Yeah, I mean that's you. You said it. You you got to choose. Um, you got to choose what you want to do in this life, and you got to choose how you how you move and how you want to be perceived, and then it's all good from there. Um, so growing up so i can tell that like you've always just kind of been like you know who you are regardless like from over time over time and it evolves as you grow it evolves so if you could talk to teenage michael what would you tell him right now like 15 year old michael. i mean shit i'm already from the future so <laughs> if i'm traveling back in time we're gonna go to providence days providence days when we started out hosting and i would just tell him to light it up even more i was doing big shows at, at these bars Mm -hmm. And back then my style was similar. My hair wasn't blue. It was black. I would just tell myself to save, save all the ideas you have or bring this idea to that me and just make it explode because there's a lot of stuff that I'm coming out with now that would be useful then. You know, like my technology, my apparel that's like glowing. Mm -hmm. It'd be way, you know, it would, it would be an impact then, but also it is now. But I feel like, you know what? It's divine timing that I have the idea when I got to L.A. Because when I got to L.A., I started developing Illuminated Apparel. So I would tell myself to do it then. But yeah, we just. I mean, yeah, you learn and you grow. And so like what you have now is awesome. And if who knows if you would have done it back then, maybe it wouldn't have been the right time. So like you said, divine timing, like this is the perfect time for you to shine and do your thing. So 100 percent. I love it. Um, What would you say is like the biggest life lesson that you've learned just being in the entertainment industry something that you would tell to somebody who's like trying to get into it and is just trying to break in what would be like your your biggest piece of advice my biggest piece of advice is don't burn bridges with people that you don't know and don't go into a room talking all this hot shit acting like you you're doing shit and you're actually not because a lot of people you go into a, you go into an event and you just kind of talking about this, that, and the third. 
and someone overhears you and they know like the person that you're talking about, they're going to call you 444 and they're going to be like on some like, oh, oh, is that on the timer? Oh yeah. Oh, I'm, so, I'm an angel number girl. So when you said that, I got excited. <laughs> we, don't, we don't, you know, we don't get off track. No, I love it. No, we can, we can talk about angel numbers less, all day. Like, let's go. <laughs> oh, I got you. I got you. Um, and again, you just, you know, know your environment, you know, and you know, don't burn bridges with people, especially in any kind of form of business. I don't, you, you gotta be respectful to the baristas. Yeah. You they're gotta, human. Of you course. gotta keep, you gotta keep that, that, that mentality of everyone is a possibility to my success. And I got friends that work at baristas. I got their homies high five in this. Nothing. Cha- I don't, I don't think people really get it. Like when I tell you to be friends and respectful to everybody. I'm talking about trash guys. I'm talking about every person you come in contact with because you don't know who they know. And again, I learned that when I first made, moved out here. I learned a lot of things about that. Building relationships is in my book. Building relationships, keeping those relationships over time. I had a 10-year relationship with someone that I emailed twice in 10 years. I'm not even going to say who the DJ is, but... I'm going to tell you that this year we're going to do a big collab. Stay in the lookout. But after a 10-year relationship, I got three emails from his manager. And the third one was like, yes, we want to do that, Michael. So you got to plant seeds with the right people. And you got to water them over time. Nothing's going to happen overnight. Everyone's like, oh, my business is not working. Hey, try a different tactic. Try something new. But again, if you believe in yourself and you believe in what you are doing is going to impact and solves a problem in life, then great, go for it. Everyone has ideas. Cool, man. The first dude to strike and go after it and execute, he's winning. You can think about ideas all day. I got ideas all day too. I write them (laughs) down in my book. Cool, man. But you got to execute. Right. Yeah, that's the hard part. A lot of people have, like you said, have ideas, write them down in there. I write so much in my down in my notes section. And then finally, I had an idea to do a podcast and I'm finally doing it. Like I had, I had this idea in November. It's now April. I don't know when I'm actually going to release this. So by that time, it may be May or June. Two, two, two. Um, (laughs) But you're right. Like you have to just put yourself out there and be one of my pet peeves. If I'm like out on a date or something and the guy is just like not friendly to the servers or the bartenders or whoever, I'm like, that just shows character. That's a big one. Oh, it's like it's like one of my top. Like I would end the date right there and then. So yeah. I agree with you. You, you should yeah. you should be nice to everyone, not only because they might serve a purpose, but because everyone's human and everyone deserves to be treated with respect. 100%. Even you know what I mean. Even like uh, this is horrible, or maybe some people will think this is horrible to say, but like even a murderer who's like killed people, in a sense, is still human and has a soul. And like, weirdly enough, I still believe that they almost deserve, it's hard to say they deserve respect, but it's like a part of me. I'm just like that kind of person where I just feel like everyone's just a human and people sometimes do bad things, but maybe that's a conversation. That's a different podcast. That's a true crime podcast. The the next person on the who wants to kill this guy dot (laughs) com. Okay. So back to, I know we talked about your childhood a little bit and then we got off track which is great because it's a podcast and you're supposed to just talk about everything but I want to go back to kind of just like who you are now um and your personality now are you still friends with anybody from your childhood and are you close with like any family after you kind of blew up or like became a public figure did that change your relationship with certain people that you grew up with you know it's a great question um the only person that I'm still connected with is like I said Zach Dillon he's he's more than just a friend he was like a mentor for me you know so a lot of a lot of things that that we did together really made me realize like you know when you got a road dog someone that believes in you and is not a hater he gives you positive reinforcement he gives you opportunity or she is is uh it's a big thing And, you know, you don't find that a lot with some people these days. You know, everyone's out for themselves and shit. But, again, this is a totally different era. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's still your bestie, would you say? He's still my bestie. I feel like, you know, over time you get a lot of new besties introduced into your life that Mm -hmm. do different things. One of my other besties lives in Miami, Dylan. Love you. She's, (laughs) like, 
supermodel. She's a vibe. She's Wait, always... his name is Zach Dylan and her name is Dylan. Yeah, her name is Dylan. It's crazy. <laughs> All the Dylans. Yeah, it's a, it's a vibe. She's, um, That's cool. She's so, so sweet. She's awesome. Um, and my sisters are actually my besties too, Darcy and Stacey. I was just going to say, like, come on. They're, they're, they're more family, right, than anything. They're family forever. We, we are just, you know, like... And they're also from the same place that you are from, right? Like so, Cape Verdean. Yeah, they are Cape Verdean, and um, I think part Canada, Canadian. Is that how I say it? Canadian. Canadian. <laughs> Canadian. A. So yeah, Darcy Stace is this family. I'm I'm the bro. They have their their R.I.P. Michael. We love you. I just you know I feel like you know we we all get each other. You know we get each other very much. We understand each other. Do you think you connect so well because of the fact that you're both Cape Verdean? Or is there more to this like soul connection that you have with them? I think the bond that we have is indestructible. And I feel like their father and 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 how he is is exactly how I am, but I'm in a obviously different 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 vibe. Different vibe. But like Similar same personality. Vibe, but like different look. Right. You know, Mike is is a lot of Cape Verde. He's a strong <laughs> powerful like i like, like that guy just just watching I, him on tv <laughs> i love pops dad i love you um, <laughs> and, and you know we have fun me dars and stace i've been taking them out in hollywood miami before we, were, we even had the show if you go back to 2012 2013 you'll see images and pictures and videos of us going out going ham being being the fun family we are and a lot of people like before they did all their their um their surgeries were like, oh, they look better. It's like, no, it's not about that. It's about what they want to do with themselves. Everybody wants to do something. That's what they feel comfortable with. Yeah. Let them be. Let them live. And it's like, we have this in common. Everyone wants to mouth off about their look. Everyone wants to mouth off about my look. Mm. And it's like, cool. Good for you, buddy. We love who we are. They love who they are. Dars and Stace have the fucking confidence just like I do. I love it. So if it, it runs the family. But at the same time, it's like <laughs> when you put us together, you get uh, season four. You get all the new dynamics that we present when we're together. It's always good to bring the fam back together. And I really feel like this season was, it was about family. We got Annika got going to college. We got Aspen like doing her thing. And it's just like Florian's trying to figure out like what he wants to do. And then, you know, you put all that in one, like, boom, and it just becomes explosion of just pure reality. And everyone's always like, is it scripted? Do you guys read lines? I'm like, no, bro. No. <laughs> we just be us. They are them. They just transparently, fluently are them. They're hilarious. I will say they just crack me up all the time. When So when was it that you got, how did it happen that you were on the show? Like, did you get a call like, hey, we know you're friends with them. We want you to show or did they call did Darcy and Stacy tell you to come on the show? Or like how did that kind of happen? So my sister Dars called me and she was like, Ben's the production's gonna be calling you because we you know, they feel like they want to meet other people in our life. Mm. And I said, Dars, I got you. I'm only doing it for you. I don't need to be on the show, I told her. I told the producers, I don't need to be on the show. I'm doing it for Dars and Stace. I'll do anything from them to the end of time. Mm. I this is my exact what I told them. And they're like, all right, cool, man. You know, that's my producer voice. All right, man, cool, bro. <laughs> like, yeah, man, we love your vibe, Michael. You seem like a real solid dude, you know. Can we can we do a FaceTime and stuff? You know, I said, yeah, listen, let's do it. Let me know. I'm down. So we did the FaceTime, all that. And this is right before season three was about to hit. So I said, all right, let's go. Where are we going first? You know, we're going we're gonna to have you meet us in Miami and do this. And I said, all right, cool. You know, big, big shout out to the whole... The whole team, Sharp, are, are, are on point. TLC, love you guys for having me. Honestly, it really turned out bigger than I thought. And I'm really grateful and humbled that, you know, we have a strong team and the whole production, you know. It's nice to hear that everyone at TLC is cool, too, because, like, I'm such a fan of the TLC shows that it's it's nice to know that they treat you well. And I mean, you, you know. know I want to I wanna raise, um, FYI. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> um, I'm not shouting out names, but I want to raise. <laughs> Give them um, a raise. Come on, guys. And, uh, you know, they've always been great. We, we all, you know, get along and on, on camera, off camera. Um, 
How has things how have things changed for you since being on the show? Has anything changed in terms of like I'm sure you get recognized here and there. People people recognize you if they watch the show. Um, has anything changed though for you other than that? Or like how often do you say that happened? Personally, my growth has changed exponentially. I feel like my hair got longer. <laughs> um, my style got wilder. Mm. But yeah, you get recognized. Cool. I mean, I'm not hard to spot. I mean, or I'm not hard to, hard to miss. To miss. <laughs> You're definitely but again, not. This was never on purpose. Right. You, know, you develop into this person based on the things that you go through in your life. And as an artist, as a pure blooded artist, I choose to be free and to be art in all forms. So, you know, my style is an art form. My hair is an art form. You know, the way I talk is an art form. You have to really understand, you know, everything is art. Everything. It is. You know, it comes from everything comes from an idea. Earth can't be spelled without art. So you know? I agree with you right. there. You know, God is art. And I, I'm a big, big, obsessed, passionate freak show art master. I mastered my craft. I, I paint goddesses and I paint whatever I feel like painting, but it's mainly dope. it's goddesses. Um, yeah, if you check the gram, I mean, Michael <clears> Ben's 444, you'll see. And a lot of musicians come to the shop because we have so much exclusive one of one attire mm -hmm. and other brands that we carry. Flasher on Melrose. That's our spot. And our second spot is Ash mm -hmm. on Melrose. So again, I'm just I'm lucky that I have these awesome places to, to you know, showcase the art and a lot of artists love it. And I'm grateful for these guys because, you know. I, I love giving back to community and, and hooking people up and making sure they, they feel good. And everybody wants something that's no one else has. Yeah. So you come to me, I will create something that no one else in the world has. So that's a big statement. And it's a factual statement. You buy something from me, you go to my website, you buy a one of one piece. Nobody in the fucking world has it. And that's what I do for people. And it inspires people. When you wear something, you feel the energy that I put into it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't realize that energy is real. Very real. First of all, I have to come check out your stores now that I know they're on Melrose, so close to here. I'm excited. I definitely want to go check that out. And um, you're right. Like, so when you're creating, what kind of, is there anything that like gets you in the mood? Like, is there a certain genre of music you need to listen to? Or like, do you meditate? Or like, what do you do when you're in that zone of creating? So my initial I call it art time so art time for me is like house music mm. we're talking like it's got to be live it's got to be up pumped up I love house like a mm -ts, mm -ts. progressive house <laughs> Coralova love you girl she's a major DJ female DJ what's up <laughs> um, uh, dead mouse vibes Sultan and Shepard I dropped those guys on the mix when I'm like painting in paint mode um yeah man that's that's where my head's at and then you know just creating art jackets paintings what, whatever it is but i need that that energy to to really you know trans tra transpire the art into something something great do you ever make something and think like oh man, this wasn't what I wanted. Or do you? are you just happy with every piece that you make? Or do you ever feel like an insecurity about something that you've made? I think sometimes as, as an artist, we get really critical about our art in the beginning. The beginning stages is always like, okay, let me do color. Let me see how this comes out. And then once it starts to not, you feel it. Like I, I'm so in tune with myself and my art that we understand that if it's not the right color, we have to change it. We have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. So a lot of like, oh wow, let me try this out comes comes around and you start to like get flowy and and, it, and if it doesn't look good, then you gotta go back. And you there's no eraser for painting. So you gotta really right. restart from scratch again. Do you think something sometimes something could be a happy accident? Like you don't mean to do that, but then you're like, wait, this is even better than I thought it was. Um, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I personally I start it and if I don't it, it comes back to me and we don't we don't like it, we have to change it. Because you feel it. You know it's not. It doesn't look right. It just, you feel it in your soul. I feel it. Even if other people say, no, it's great. I, I love mean, it. Yeah. You're, it's, you're not feeling wrong, it. Completely wrong. Completely wrong. I never do uh, anything that I don't feel like completely 
a hundred about. I never go go and like uh, uh, say yes, this is done. No, if it doesn't look right to me, as a real artist, every real artist can relate. If it doesn't look good to you, you feel it. Mm-hmm. You gotta change it. So you figure that out. Even if it's like a big fuck up, you gotta figure it. Re- redo everything. I don't give a shit. I don't care. That's how critical. It's your baby. And so perfect, perfection of my mastercraft. When I'm painting, I gotta have it like spot T. So. Yeah. No, I love that. Um. So let's get real. If you were on your deathbed today, would you say that you feel fulfilled with your life, or is there anything left that you haven't done that you really want to do? If like, if you knew like. Or if you knew that you're, if, if someone said you have a week to live, like, are you fulfilled or is, or what is, what's missing, if anything? I got to say, you know, that's a good question. And like, those are the things that I never think about, but I'm going to be honest. Like, and we'll there, knock on wood. You if know there I mean? was, no, nah, we got angel protection. We're good. We do so always. I just feel like with those kind of situations, you know, if I was trying to get that bucket list done in a week. I would definitely shave my head. <laughs> That's I, I was not expecting that answer. but I, I, I would shave my head because, you know, I feel like if I'm going to be going in the ground, I'll just go on the ground with, some, with something different. I love it. I'll do that. And then I would just dress normal. You just would change what your, your look. Complete opposite. <laughs> just see how you fit in the world. Complete opposite. What about any activities? Like, is there anything that you're like, man, I really wish I, I want to skydive and I haven't done that yet. Or I want to get married and I haven't done that yet. Or just anything that like you still feel like you still want to accomplish before that moment. Yeah. Race cars, driving <laughs> DeLoreans in the fucking fast lane. Okay. You know, cyber jumping off of some cliff with some fucking wings and some ultra fucking <laughs> like flying fucking uh, hybrid, hybrid, what's it called? Hydra, hydro wings. And, um, you know, fucking cyber surfing, um, some adrenaline like junkie surfing stuff. with some fucking sharks and shit, just like traveling to 2044 and just like seeing myself there. Um, what else? I mean, a lot of things that I do come from the future. So I'm in the middle between the eighties and 2044. So when you become who you really are, you start to really like mesh these two beings together and you start to become what it is is like a fusion of your 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 eighties vibes and your your futuristic vibes because I don't just get these ideas mm. from being being in this time zone, you know. We got to change dimensions to get these kind of ideas. I'm gonna show you. I got I brought something with me Ooh, to give you an idea of like see. where my where where I'm at. But again, you gotta you gotta really just like like channel this this higher energy, the higher self. A lot of people are trying to be all spiritual and this and that, but I'm authentic as fuck. Like, I walk around like this. So when people watch this, is this dude serious? Is he for real? Does he really go out like that, bro? (laughs) Yes, he does. He's so extra, man. (laughs) Why is his hair blue, bro? Because I like blue. What's the problem? But I miss my blue. I used to have all sorts of color hair. Now you're making me want to dye my hair. Actually, I have an appointment in a couple of weeks. I'm going to do a go. little pink and red. I love it. I mean, I'm just here to inspire. I'm pure art. I am pure art. I love it. And yes, guys, he does look like this because when I ran into him at the bar, this is exactly what he looked like. And that's why I recognized you so easily. So never change. Well, I don't want to say never change because we always evolve. So you might grow. change and you might. Yeah, you might just grow. have green hair tomorrow. You know what I mean? Like grow. do what you got to do. Wait, just, what did you bring, though? I, I mean, let's pull it out. I don't even know. You need to like kill the lights a little bit because this thing's gonna. I'm I'm very <laughs> very like like my third eye is open pretty strongly. So a lot of things that I create come from that energy of you know spirituality that's on a different level frequencies and you know the words that I say will resonate with most because we only speak the truth. We only speak from the higher self. And we want to con- control the art that we have, but sometimes we can't. We can't control the art. We just do it. It pours out of you. Every way. It's not really even you doing it, right? Like you're saying, it's your higher self. It's sometimes it just like speaks through you. And like, is that how you feel when you, when you paint? It's and a conduit. Right. It's you're just the per- Yeah. I'm the, I'm the, the vessel. Yep. You know? I feel that. I am light. 
That's it. And when I wear my glow jackets, you can call them glow jackets, it's, it's a form of light that is translated into this place so everyone can see it. Some people don't like it. Some people love it. But at the end of the day, bro, we all are light. All this light is why love. I brought this piece with me. It's a, it's, a, it's a face mask, but the third eye is open, and I'm going to show you why. You want me to dim the lights for it? Yeah, let's dim the lights. Okay. Because this is a special piece. Let's and see. I literally had them, had them make it today just for this interview. So what? you can see, you know, I don't even know. I'm going to have to take okay, off my I'll, shades. I'll do a little bit less so we can still see. Yeah, that's cool. Maybe that's like, cool. Um, that's cool. How would you... And again, this is, this is a sample. So. You think this is okay? This is all good. Okay, so we're about to see the mask. Oh, whoa, that's yeah. cool. And it, does it light up? Oh, you're going to have to wait for that one. Oh, okay. Hold on. So. I'm intrigued already. Again, this is, this is the one from, for me. The other ones that we have are actually ski masks, but this, is, this was made today. They, I had them rush make this because I wanted them, I wanted to show you. Like where my head's at. By the way, if you guys are not watching this and you're just listening, the reason it sounds muffled, he has the mask on right now. Um, so I suggest you are watching this on YouTube so you can actually see it. So when you look at the third eye, that's all you see, right? Mm -hmm. But I can see right through you. Oh, sick. I can see right through you. <laughs> and we ain't playing games. We over here third eye in it because that's what it is. And we developed this. We, we did. And not only that's cool that we love glowing apparel. This is for anybody out there that loves glowing apparel. That's sick. So yeah. maybe I'll just do the rest of the. I'm just kidding. Wait, get a little closer just to. Um, I want people to actually see it, so you can get a little closer to the camera. This yeah, is there we go. Oh shit. That's okay. It'll. There we go. Yeah, you guys see that? That's dope. This is this is this is the way. I'm a third eye girl. I got a, I got a tattoo of an eyeball on my thigh. I love it. I'm all about it. This is the way. So. So cool. Okay, I'm gonna turn this back on real quick. Samples. <laughs> Malfunctions. <laughs> hey, this is this is what makes it real right here. Ain't scripted over here. I know, right? Everything's falling Ain't apart. scripted over you here. Know what? At the end of the day, because we even really need light. Ain't scripted over here. It's not scripted, just like all the I took reality my shades TV. off for you guys. Oh my god, I can see I all three don't. of your eyes. I can see all three of them now. <laughs> Before you, I could only see one. <laughs> I usually won't, but here we go. <laughs> all right, you're all dark now. Anyways, um, before we go, I am going to... Let me just turn this back on for you guys. See, this is what it means. Raw, uncut, I love unscripted. It. I love this it. is what happens when you're a one woman operation. Like I don't have a team. I don't have anyone pressing great. record. I, I you know, that's, like that's phenomenal. one day I, maybe I will. I'm but for now, it. cheers to just doing you gotta, things you by gotta, yourself. You gotta do it. You gotta do it. Um. So yeah, this was super fun. I got to learn more about just who you are as a person and like what makes you you. Um, and now I do want to give you the opportunity to promote anything. I know you said you have a book coming out. So like, work, let's hear it. On the book. Okay, let's hear I it. Mean, like anything you want to say, any final words, like go for it. Now is your time to shine. I mean, most importantly, I mean, it's all about being you. You know, mm -hmm. I can only express how much being you will translate into the universe and authentically help you in the end. Because at the end of the day, I'm being me. TLC loves me because I'm being me. That's all we can I, ask. I can never be an Abercrombie or any other brand model. <laughs> no plugs intended. I just want to tell people it's okay to be you. You don't have to hide behind all these other extra shits. You can always just, you know, remember like who you are is, is more powerful than anything else in the world. Absolutely. And if you're going to do something in life, you just got to go for it. Don't don't be scared because once you're scared, once you once you feel that that fear that sits in your stomach, once you feel that right there, that's when you jump. That's when you go after whatever it is. Because at the end of the day, if you ain't doing something that you love, 
You already dead. Okay? <laughs> I love that. I agree I don't with even, you, man. I don't even want to sit here and promote shit. I'm promoting be you. Yes. Because actually, I don't need to promote anything. I don't. I'm already doing my thing. I'm just happy to be alive in this time and to revel into what I created and to be an artist. If you want art, go to michaelbenz444.com. Buy some art. Buy a one-on-one. Buy a reprint. Support the artists. But at the same time, it's not about me anymore. I'm just here to inspire you. Because a lot of people, they get hesitant about changing their look or doing this. I'm telling you, go for it. If you're thinking about it, this is your opportunity to just believe. Because once you grow, those little steps turn you into who you really are. And we know who we are. Do you know who you are? That's beautiful. That was literally the perfect ending. Do you know who you are? We will leave you with that thought. And that is something to ponder on. That's something I meditate on every day. Who really am I? And I love that. So thank you so much for being here. I appreciate thank you so you much. And I can't wait to check out your store yeah. and support the art. Time. I Come absolutely by. will. There every day. Yay. Well, wrap wrap it up. Episode one of Almost Anonymous. Oh, shit. It's Episode lit. One. Bitches. Yeah. <laughs> Can I get a shot? Woo woo. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Can I get a shot? Woo woo. Four 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 all day, baby. Four 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 all day. All right. Beautiful. Ain't much no crazy.